talking about you got this and you got that and you gonna murder this one and murder that one you talking all that bullshit i'ma put it to you like this yo this yo this is for the nerds this is for the brainiacs this is what we deserve go ahead and play it back you ain't gonna touch me not gon' do nothing, you are not above me I bet you wish you was me, I know it, I know What is poppin' everybody? And welcome back to another special episode of the Only Friends Podcast Well, you know, it's me and my only friends Which includes, but it's not limited to, Poo Dog Melissa <laughs> hey Melissa, what's up? Oh, hi Melissa. Uh, uh, okay. You're looking a little pale over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess Melissa's not here. What's popping, sidekick? How you feel today? Guapo, you you got to fix the saturation on her shot. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's looking a little whitish. Uh, I think she forgot today's Thursday. Maybe she's caught up in the madness. You know? Wow, March the March, March madness. madness. Let's go, Dukies, baby! Pittsburgh, Boo. baby. Woo. What happened? You didn't have them in your bracket? No, he's BYU. I'm UNLV, baby. Come on. What does that have to do with BYU? Duke? Why would I ever root for Duke? Who's talking about Duke, bro? Yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you talking I about? I thought you were talking about Duke. Sorry. Duke no, Quesney. No, no, no. I'm talking about Duke Quesney. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> AKA Duquesne Dukes. Duke Dukes. Oh, okay. Haven't been in the... Haven't been in the uh, <laughs> clearly. I'm not basketball guy. Haven't well, they haven't made the tournament since the 70s and they haven't won a game since 1969. Chico's nice. a huge, huge Duquesne nice. fan. You know, that's weird. You know why? No, why? Because they, they're rivals with Pitt, they're not really, uh, they though. were back in the day. Yeah, yeah, they well, were back when, when, they were, when right, your papa right, was a child, right. so he loves them, <laughs> right? Right, yeah, very, very <laughs> the weird. The city game, they used to play, you know, this yeah. every, every year, it'd be the city game, you know, yeah, yeah. Pitt, I've come Pitt versus Duke. Uh, and... My my allegiance to being a Yinzer has changed my views. Uh, the the scandal at Penn State, coupled with the fact that I can now physically distance myself. You're from, full pit now. I'm not full pit. No, 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 no. But I, I, I truly never hated Pitt. I didn't understand it because it wasn't a rivalry when we were yeah. kids. It was beaten into <clears> me. <throat> yeah, I get that. <laughs> well, in the '80s, Pitt was the superior team. So if you were a Penn State fan. Obviously, the what do you 90- mean they were a superior team? They were very good. They weren't superior. Uh, Penn State won. They won, they won one. one. At least one. One won, or two. Yeah. I, I think they, they won were one always good. Yeah. It was a big rivalry back then because they were both always yeah. really, really good. Yeah. I thought Pitt won more than one championship during that time, but I could be Pitt, wrong. Pitt has they a were lot, sick, though. They Pitt had has Marino. a lot more uh, national championships than, than Penn State does. Yeah. But Penn State got screwed out of a few. So. Well, they were independent forever, but they got screwed after. They got screwed both. They, yeah. screwed, they got screwed when they were independent, and they got screwed their mm-hmm. second. 1994. Second yeah, whenever Kajana really Carter was. They should have split with Nebraska. Fuck a split. Yeah. Should have won it outright. Won that. Uh, At least split. Wait, so I'm sorry. You said Pitt was, has won what? More national championships than Penn State. That's what I said. I'm, I'm talking about uh, football. football. Gotcha. I, I guess we should have clarified that we're talking about football. Well, I'm well, always talking prob- about probably football. Probably true in basketball, too, because they're both probably at zero. Um, no, Pitt, Pitt. Oh, I don't know. Pitt, Pitt, Pitt is at zero. They made the Final Four once. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah, and I didn't Penn know if State, they... For sure. Definitely never. I think they made the Sweet 16 a few years back and it was a big deal. They won the NIT a couple times. Yeah, that's cool. That's true. (laughs) Can't forget that. NIT is pretty big too back in the day. It's almost worth something. Chat's saying that UConn's going to run it back again this year. That might happen, but I disagree because there are two teams that I think are going to get in their way. Number one, the Duquesne Dukes. We're talking Cinderella story here, baby. Their coach is retiring after the season ends. They're riding them off into the sunset in the proper way. I, I think Sweet 16 minimum. A lot of disruption there from the mm-hmm. Dukies. <laughs> they're they're going to drop a Dukie on, uh, on, their, on their bracket. Like your dog. Very strange to me also. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they seed these things, but round one of the East is in Pittsburgh. Okay. They went to Omaha. So yeah, they don't really want people to get home. To well, yeah, I'm home not right. saying that they do. I'm just saying they went to the furthest place away. Yeah. <laughs> they, they put them in like the West. Yeah. Like, it's the, always, the it's always like that. I don't know I, why. I don't, I don't think that's true. There's too many teams for it to always be like that. I'm saying there's like <laughs> if you look every year, you'll see like a team. Oh, yeah, out yeah, of yeah. Place. yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. And it's always yeah. going to be the lower seated teams right. that get inconvenienced for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so not only is Duquesne going to do great, but sleeper story. And you were you were you were on this early. We're talking like seventh grade. You were on this. Kentucky. Yeah, Calipari. Mm-hmm. Calipari, baby. Moon Township. My dad also likes Kentucky. Well, 
Calipari's a Yinzer. He's a Yinzer. He's Italian. Yeah. What else do you need? What else do you need? I, right. do, you, do you got that interview? How of, many uh, of you are from Calipari? Pittsburgh? Yeah, here we go. Yins, downtown. <laughs> this is me on I the mean, podcast in 20 years. I, we had a crick in our backyard. <laughs> our yard? My mom used to say, red up. <laughs> like, red up? What, what is red up? Like, clean up. Red up. Do you know what gum ba- a gum band is? <laughs> like a rubber band? It's a it was gum band. Pop? I never knew. They said, are you going to have a soda? What the hell? What are you talking about? Pop? I mean, let, let me say this about Pittsburgh. When I grew up, it was a blue-collar blue collar town. But it's never changed the roots of what Pittsburgh is and what it's about. The Steelers are still a... Still. I call them the Stillers, as in Pittsburgh, Stillers. <laughs> They're still a blue-collar team with fans who love them and and like where I grew up my high school teammates are still my best friends they still come to games and they will you Child know the and skimpy. say you know we anyway. Gumby but, <laughs> Simmons and the crew yeah we were all brought up the same way our fathers were laborers mom raised us and and put hope and dreams and you can be whatever that was mom but we were all the same it was a melting pot and, uh, you know, you were taught you're not there's nothing in this world is going to be given to you. You're going to have to go take what you want. And if you don't work. You will not eat. That was the God famous right. line. You don't work. You're not eating. You work. You, work. you better. If you want to be better Amen. than somebody, you better work. That's Pittsburgh. That's how winning's done. These guys are going to steamroll everybody. It's over. Just crown them. Crown them champions. Crown. Nobody's crown. beating you, Con. Love it. Kentucky is. Kentucky, yeah. Rolling, rolling Let's through. Go. They're not. Let's Wildcats, I'm baby. actually, that's the team that I liked growing up because I didn't have any college basketball around me, mm-hmm. Kentucky. And I think they have no chance. I, I just feel such a sense of nostalgia hearing somebody say mom the correct way. Like, it feels so nice. Oh, hi, Pippers. Look at Pip. That's not what she looks like right now. She is assed out on this, mm-hmm. on this bed right now. She took a poop on the carpet. Well, she had to go. You know, you gotta go. You gotta go. I'm sure they're rewarding signs. Oh, it was a fucking yeah. steamy. Yeah, one, I've so. I've always been uh, a Kentucky. Well, first my dad, they he he liked them. Mm. Um, just for I don't know what reason. Probably probably because of Kyle Perry. How long? I don't know how long Kyle Perry's been there. I feel like he's been there a long time. Think, yeah, but he might even like them before then. But uh, yeah, like you said, going back to seventh grade, I remember in health class, Mr. Bowser oh, yeah. was yeah. our health slash Big gym, Duke fan. gym teacher. Huge Duke fan. Hate but, Duke because of him. How funny is this? So, you know, he was obviously big into college basketball. Yeah. And uh, so he he had everyone. We did like a draft. Like, I, I don't know how he like decided who got to pick first. But you, everyone got to pick a team in the tournament. And if the team won... You got two bonus points right. to add it to your grade. Yeah. <laughs> so like you can gamble on, right. on your grade. We learned and young, baby. I picked Kentucky, and they won it that year. Sharp. That maybe that brought me up from a C to a B. Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Bowser, man. I still, ha- I still got a, a grudge uh. against him. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, first of all, he used to give us extra drink. He was the best. Oh, are you, you going to talk about how... Uh, in fucking you, wiffle ball. In wiffle ball, yeah. He used to just hit bombs, and he just... Was just like, nope, that's not a home run. No, that's Wait. foul. It'd be like right down dead center, home run. Be like, nope, it hit the rack. He was count. such a fucking troll, man. <laughs> he was such a fucking troll. He would keep a running tally of people who hit home runs during gym class and yeah. wiffle ball. He would give me an extra four gym classes a week. Mm-hmm. I would go in there and just drop the thunder. And every fucking class, didn't count he would it. explain to me why it didn't count. <laughs> it was such a... <laughs> It was such a shot Pretty to sure my Brian ego. Brian Helsel won the whole thing. Every time. It was always... Oh, man. It was so frustrating. Him and his apologize. Oh, man. Who's is this? Is this your bracket, Derek Wap? No, I was just pulling stuff up. Well, what do we got here? Is this last year's? No. It's like 2024. That's what I Googled anyway. Okay, so this is... It's some random person. Matt Let's Norlanders. Let's see if they're sharp. Do they have uh, the, the, Duke? the Duquesne, Dukies? Duquesne Dukies coming out of the, the West? Where are they? Uh, 11. Oh, wait. They weren't in the West. They were. They must have been the Midwest. Is Oklahoma the Midwest? Midwest. Conrad, <laughs> you're our expert ge- geographer. Is uh, Oklahoma the, the mid? Or wait. No, they had BYU. No, sorry. They not were in Nebraska. Is, Nebra- is Nebraska the, the Midwest? Definitely. Wait, that's not even fucking That's the close. heart of the Midwest. Of course it is. Oh, the heart of the Midwest. Right. The heart of the Midwest because, you know, it's right next door to fucking Pittsburgh. What? <laughs> 
the fuck are you talking about? Even Berkey understands that geography. Jesus Christ. You are the start of the Midwest How on do you the say east mom? side. How do you say mom? Mom. Mom. How do you, mom. How do you say it? Mom. 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 Like normal mom. people. I mom. say it like, like, a, like a British person. Mom. Mom. Yeah, me yeah, too. M-U. Your mom? Yeah, mom. mom. It's like M A U M. Mom. 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 Ma, ma, Melis. <laughs> well, how do you say mom? Uh, Carrie! <laughs> uh, you call your mom by your first name? Who, all the time. <laughs> Michelle calls her mom Joan Carrie. all the time. Yeah, she's just who's like, the, who's Joan. your favorite? Who's Before supposed to win this tournament? UConn. UConn's a big favorite, but yeah. um, big favorite in NCAA is like you win a quarter of the time. So like, especially nowadays, like used to be like the final four is almost set. Like, used to be like ones and twos always. Yeah, but like nowadays, these mid major teams are so fucking good that there just, have been a lot more people upsets. People just get knocked off. Uh, 16 seed won the, the first round for the first time ever, I think five years ago, maybe. It's been a, it's been a minute now, but it was a big deal when it, it happened. George yeah. Mason, Who, right? I honestly don't remember. You would think that something like that would be memorable, but I think a 15 and a 16 have both won within like the last five years. Um, UMBC, that's what it was. Yeah, and then there was a Cinderella story. I want to say it was FAU recently yeah. made. Uh, I think Final Four. Do you remember? I, I want to say they were a double-digit seed. I feel they like were. there was like a, a ten through twelve that had made the Final Four recently, mm. but it's still usually chalky. Uh, who's uh, who's Smokey got? You, you, finally, somebody, I, I somebody had, paying I mean, close yeah. to only that, you can prevent forest right. fires. Smo Smokey, uh, <laughs> the bear, he's he, <laughs> oh, right, he's Brian. like he's like uh, scruff McGruff adjacent. Right, I couldn't find a scruff one. Yeah, so this is what I had to you go couldn't with. Find it. I well, like that. I did, that's I, nice. To be fair, yeah. I didn't look all that hard. Instagram targeted me. <laughs> there he is. Instagram just sent me the link to this, and they said this uh, seems like something you need. And I said, you know what? I do need this shirt, Instagram. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, I don't even know how the I, fuck I remember that. George, I think, George Mason was an 11 seed that got Final Four, mm, like in 2006. Strong. I think Pip's going to look like Scruff McGruff when he grows uh, up. Number uh, 10, Davidson Pip, when Cole Curry Pipper? was there. Uh, VCU Rams, 2011. Oh, yeah, Davidson. I oh that's when Shaka one. Smart was uh, their coach. Yeah, yeah, Shaka was great. Florida, Gulf Coast. Uh, Florida, Georgia line? <laughs> Florida, Gulf Coast Eagles were a sweet 16, but Baby they were, they were 15 song, seed. Make me want to roll my uh, windows uh -huh. down. Uh, cool. Loyola, 2018. They made uh, Final Four. Lost to Michigan. St. Peter's, Peacocks, Elite Eight lost to UNC. What's, what's the worst seed that's ever won it? Uh, Lower than a four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. sure. It's oh, be it's NC State, right? No. Didn't they have the huge upset uh, with, like, whenever the... The wolf pack. <laughs> Am I wrong? Is my memory not serving me? Wasn't it during the uh, Vivano era? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, at least. Mm. The lowest seed to ever win is the eighth seed. Mm. It was... I thought it was... It, it was, was like U UConn, right? Nope. Villanova. 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 1985. Hmm. What am I thinking about with NC State? What was UConn when Kemba was there? They were, they were high, good. They were good. I don't yeah. think so. Nah, like, they were good. Let's mm. see. Everybody research. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do your research. It's research you gotta start hour. typing before you ask these questions. Yeah, you know? if this right. way it comes up. <clears throat> Can't believe you cut to me when I was mid-type. <laughs> <laughs> um, got finally, your ass. Finally doing got research. Your ass. Ass, you know? Lenny, you got anything uh, with the hell? Uh, I'm trying. I'm He's fucking writing Discord messages. I'm I can't not. believe it. I'm not. I'm not. UConn won in 2011. In 2011, I'm trying to get the picture. Dun, 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 we just wonder what seed they were. I know. I'm trying to find it. Wait, who? 2011, UConn. UConn. Oh. This is riveting. Jeez. Okay, here. <laughs> this is what I was talking about. NC State has won two national championships in 1974, won the Final Four MVP. David Thompson led the Wolfpack to victory over Marquette. And then 1983, when Jim Valvano's team defeated Houston's by Slamma Jamma. I thought that they were like... Oh, they were a three seed, Jesus. I right. thought they were really low seeded, though. I guess, I guess that was It was probably just a big upset. Yeah. So it seemed like that because, you know, but... I mean, like maybe the... What was the team they beat? Slamma Jamma. Five Slamma Jamma, baby. Five Wait, Slamma Jamma. With Hakeem. Were, the Dream. UConn, UConn was so fucking good that year. They, were they, had, ha they had Hakeem to beat. I'm pretty sure. And he was like a fucking a absolute animal as a UConn center. was 26 and 9. That's not very good. Yeah. Pretty good. That's not bad. That's eh. Definitely worthy of a 3 seed. Ohio <laughs> State, like, for, uh, yeah, number one seeds were 32 and 2, 30 and 4, yeah. 32 and 2. Pitt, 
Pittsburgh was in one seed this year. Not this year. No, no 2011. Th- yes, that was the Jamie Dixon era. He mm. was very good. Pitt was yeah. good back God, then. There was a brief era where I watched college basketball and was plugged oh. into March Madness. I was just talking about this the other this day. This was like, the but- Butler year. Yeah. Butler was eight seed and they lost the UConn. Yeah, that was with, uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, coaching the Celtics. Gordon Hayward. No, 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 the coach. Oh. Doc uh, Rivers? Hit, no, no. no. Uh, he's a nerdy white dude. He yeah. ended up coaching the Celtics. Yeah, oh, he oh, he's oh, uh, Brad Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, third time's a charm. We got there. He's, he's, now, good, puppy. he's now not the GM. Of the, the Is he really? He's uh, like he's moved up to I think GM and yeah. He said Doc Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> he was there for a little bit, right? I, I the Celtics, think it's yeah, the, but not college. Yeah, it's, it's, he uh, definitely got a promotion. There was there was a there was a, weird. There was a brief window where I was like super locked into NCAA basketball, and I miss it so much. <laughs> you were locked in. I was because like I was talking about this yesterday. I filled out three brackets, and I cared so little that I randomized one of the brackets. <laughs> Another <laughs> one I picked like. Uh, I can't. I might have went by like mascots or something. It's so cool the the Yahoo bracket system now. You you can choose from like twenty different drop downs of how they'll randomize the bracket for you. Oh, so, so you, I would. Yeah, I should have just did that. Yeah, and then I filled one out myself. But like filling it out was such a tedious task because I just don't follow it at all. You don't know anything, anyways. But I. Re- You're literally just it's clicking not about knowing. It's like you watch the like. During that Jamie Dixon era, I would watch. So you'd watch. I don't games. know, maybe twenty, thirty games a season. It was so good. Uh, the, yeah, like, and it honestly had me like plugged more into the NBA too because you would see these. Like, I remember D Wade putting on a big display during the uh, Marquette during the, run, during the Marquette run, where nobody had heard, or at least the casual like myself had never heard of D Wade prior to that. And then all of a sudden, it's like he's a big star, ends up going in the lottery. Same thing with Steph Curry in the Davidson run. It was like, who the fuck is this kid? And you realize he's Dale Curry's kid, and like all that stuff. It's like, man, this is nice because it's a funnel. To like actually getting locked into the NBA, which I, for my entire life, have never given a shit about not having a team from Pittsburgh, only mm-hmm. really following Jordan and LeBron. Same. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, you watch it on Christmas and now there's NFL. So it kind of lost me. But what I realized the most disappointing part was, was that somewhere between high school and the end of that Jamie Dixon era, call it like 2011, 2012, uh, I had started gambling so much on th- like or m- let me rephrase i started gambling so high for meaningful amounts of money that brackets no longer interest me mm-hmm. and that's so goddamn sad yeah because there is nothing more exhilarating than sweating a march madness bracket that actually has a shot right like you feel like such a genius mm-hmm. when you pick the three upsets on day one opening right. round, yeah. you're like, oh my God, baby, we're doing it. This is it. Mm-hmm. This is the year for the perfect bracket. <laughs> <laughs> Never I, knew I, bracket. I knew I should have taken that free roll on ESPN. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't I do it? <laughs> Never going to be a perfect bracket. Yeah. It's so <laughs> hard. It's just impossible. It's, it's, I mean, you know, you know how this works. Um, <clears throat> before we get to the who's cooking segment oh, of the that's day, that's what it was. We do have you're some. talking about. Saint, oh. 2022 15 seed St. Peter's got to Elite Eight. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what you're yeah. talking about. 2020, and you're talking a 16 about. seed, uh, maybe more than once, but a 16 uh, seed has won uh, the, the whatchamacallit, the first round. Opening round. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just happened not too long ago first, yeah, for like, the first time. Yeah. And then maybe it happened again. I don't know, but I, I, you're right. It wasn't very long yeah. ago. I oh, my God. Somebody posted something. Oh God, keep on going. Hold on. Don't leave this topic for I, a second. I don't know. Like, okay. well, <laughs> from what I've seen, it's just like I think the only 16 uh, was that – uh, UMB, UMBC won as a 16 seed, but there's a lot of 15 versus twos. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very easy to like conflate a 15 2 versus a 16 1. Mm. Um, okay, so uh, that NC or that NC State team that I was talking about, they were number six seed, got it, but they really blew through everybody. They beat um, they won, they won the whole thing, yeah. They beat UNLV, which was really good that year. Uh, I think they, I think that UNLV team had. Oh man, what was their big star? I, it wasn't the guy who died on the court, was it? No, he was in, he was from Maryland. Dude, Andy's losing his fucking mind right oh, now. By the for way, sure, he well, is at home listening to this. Not right now because he's watching the games, but he'll listen to it on replay, and he's just beside himself, angry that they're just getting everything which, wrong. Which, for what it's worth, like as little anything. as I follow basketball, as little as I yeah. follow basketball, my recall here is like pretty fucking strong. Should've, we actually should have brought him in. He would have been able to. That's true. Was it Sean Marion? Yeah. 
Uh, maybe. Went to UNLV. Okay, then yeah, probably. 1999 year. No, no, no. Way, okay. way, way earlier. Back yeah. in the, the see, that's how little I know about basketball. Larry this is like Johnson. 1983. Yeah. Yes. No. No. 1991. Tarkarian. No, 83. Tarkarian was the coach. Yeah. 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 I'm just looking up different, uh, different UNLV athletes. It, it was when UNLV was really good with Tark. Reggie uh, Toys. 1978. Larry Johnson. 1991. Stacy Ogman. 1991. Greg Anthony. 1991. Sydney Green. Okay, we don't need to read off the fucking... I'm trying to find him. I'm trying to wait for you to say, yes, what, that what, one. <laughs> well, I just told you, it was 1983. I'm trying to wait for Conrad to get his thing. And he's still... Oh my God, I can't find it. Just go on. It's, it's so good that we'll come back to it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. It's so, so good he doesn't know what he's talking about. Jesus Christ. I right. saw it at like fucking five o'clock this morning. Cacophony. 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 Can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so before we get to the the who's cooking segment, uh, there's one more bro who's down a little bad. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw the news, but uh, we have another Pete Rose situation arising here with uh, Otani. I don't know what the follow-up has been. Currently, he's blaming his, his translator on everything, uh, as far as I understand it, but it sounds as though he has like seven figures worth of gambling debts. Uh-oh. Um... Do, well, or, do you know do you know what the MLB's rule is if you're allowed to bet on other sports or not? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. We were talking about this last night. I, I should have looked it up. Oh, it was Hank Gathers. Thank you, T Sprinkles. You're the best. Uh unlike Landon. Who I just was, failed yeah. failed us completely. I was just trying to look. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> Never matter. mind. Never doesn't mind. Matter. Hank Gathers is who died on the court. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. Fuck you. So <laughs> everyone is mentioning the full how do you say F H A L L I C? Phallic. The phallic upset trend. 2021, Oral Robinson over Ohio State. Oh, oh Robert. Okay. 2022, St. Yes. Peter's uh-huh. over Kentucky. <laughs> okay. 2023, mm-hmm. fairly Dickinson <laughs> over Purdue. Okay. Everyone is talking about Moorhead. Moorhead State. <laughs> yes. Or mm-hmm. Longwood okay. in 2024. <laughs> okay. Gotta take, gotta take both. <laughs> got to cover your fun. bases. I got to say I probably don't have enough more head <laughs> or exposure uh, <laughs> or long wood exposure on my on my brackets. I, I wonder if there's still time to change. I'd I mean, like if a little more to go with wood. One, it's over. Yeah, I would like a little more. You would like more head? I would like long wood. I would like long wood. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Right, They're both Moorhead. pretty based. She said. They are pretty based. How did somebody fucking even see that? Do these people pay attention? Bro, the internet's undefeated. Are you kidding <laughs> yeah. me? They get a lot of time on their hands. Are you, are you kidding me? I saw that at like 5 o'clock this morning. I started dying laughing. I was like, what the fuck is this? People are crazy. All so right. Let's, let me, let's see. The, here's the headline. Dodgers fire Shohei Atani's interpreter amid massive theft allegations. This is, this right. is spinning it, by the way. Uh, let, me, let me see another couple headlines. So there was um, a video that showed um, Otani walking up to the interpreter. What's his name? Uh, um, Ippoli? I can't pronounce it, but yeah. Yeah. So he was walking up to the interpreter in Ippi. the Ippi. Ippi in the dugout. And he's just like smiling and just like very casual. So like it's it sent the internet on their sleuth. Mm. Like this is the guy that's gambling. Okay. So yeah, it says Dodgers explaining gambling scandal after Shohei Otani interpreter accused of stealing millions of dollars from Dodgers star. So, I mean, the good news is, at least publicly speaking, uh, this guy's going to take the fall. Oh, <laughs> we're, yeah. not, we're not going to lose Otani. Because, look, from my perspective, I don't care. Right. I, I don't give a fuck. If this guy signs a three quarters of a billion dollar deal and he wants to fuck off a few million betting on cricket. Yeah. Let him. Right. <laughs> you know, let the guy have a little fucking fun. Let well, him bet. Let's, let's, you know, let's think about this. Pete Rose isn't allowed in the fucking stadium. Also, also insane, by the way. Like, look, I've met Pete Rose. He's a curmudgeon. He's, <laughs> he's a prick. He's everything that that era, like, personality-wise represents. Like, you know how people, like, talk about Ty Cobb being, mm-hmm. like, such a fucking asshole? Mm-hmm. That, that's Pete. But <laughs> And he has a lot of flaws. And don't get me wrong, he was probably a gambling addict and a degenerate and a lot of things. Stinky but Pete. He's also one of the greatest hitters of all time, and he fucking bet on himself. <laughs> it's the wildest shit ever. Mm-hmm. He got banned in, from betting on himself? Yes. Banned from baseball for life, not in the Hall of Fame, because as a manager, he bet on his teams to win. Insane. And, like, we were talking about this at the, at the table last night, 
and people were making the argument of like, oh, well, he has insider information like that. I'm like, it's not the fucking SEC overseeing this. Yeah. You think people give a shit about the bookies? Right. You know, like, oh, no, Pete has an edge against fucking McKeesport Mike down here taking <laughs> running numbers <laughs> for fucking Joey Buckala up in the up in the Squirrel Hills. It's like, come I mean, on, man, we don't care. I mean, the only argument is that he could have some type of like uh, connection with the other coach and like get the like, other coach to take a dive. Yeah. Uh, uh hey, that's the manager I want to fucking hire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me W's, Are you baby. Me? Yeah. He's he's not only paying people off to throw games against us, but then he's doubling down and recouping that money what? by betting? <laughs> Genius. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's corruption and that's <laughs> yeah. that's some it, shit. It, I'm 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 being hyperbolic because uh it's it's corruption that like wouldn't make any sense. Right. It, like, why would you why would you kick. involve another person because like, you just well, not only that, but the other person could just like, you know, bet uh, on himself right. instead. Yeah. Or or whatever. That's you know what I'm what saying. I mean? yeah, yeah. There, there's you couldn't be bought off as a manager, I don't think. Right. I mean, outside of like you know some massive. They, have, they play 182 games, a little bit of extra money. 62. Mo- 62. Uh, a little bit of extra money, a couple ten, ten games out of the year. It's no. pretty nice. Speaking no, I of, disagree. One week away. Come on, man. It's one, too early. What, it's not it's, too it's early. Way too early. One fucking week away. It's way too early. <laughs> Let me have my moment. Here's, here's the thing. Not only is it too early right now, <laughs> yeah, it's too early in like July. It's too, <laughs> it's, it's too early a week from now. It's too early a month from now. It's like, too early a year from now. No, Call you up in September. Say, how are we doing? No, no. All-star break is when we can start talking pirates because we'll know enough by then. It's true. Oh, I take that. Back. Wait, Honestly, that's nope. not true. The first three weeks, we get to talk about them a lot because they're yeah. going to come out hot for do. sure. They always do. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of talent. They'll fizzle <clears throat> right around the All Star break, and then around the trade deadline, we'll get your best players exactly. Get, get sent right to the Yankees. Go keep Yanks! Ra- keep Ryan. Haynes. We're gonna be buyers this time. It's incredible. You're never gonna buy anything in Pittsburgh. It's, it's not happening. It's, I'm gonna buy waterfront property, buddy. Uh, <laughs> it's remarkable that I haven't become a Yankees fan over all these years with all the Pirates. They've that are taken under. every goddamn bit of talent <laughs> that the Pirates have ever had outside of Barry Bonds. Yep. And I instantly became a Giants fan when Barry Bonds got got. Mm-hmm. Uh, released. It was just like, oh, that's that's my team now. That's my guy. Got your Giants colors on right now. That's right. Let's go, Smokey. <laughs> Only you can prevent forest fires. Speaking of forest fires, let's take a look at who's cooking. Ready or not, kill I come. Jumped out with my soul leaking, going hard till I'm so eager. No chatting and no speaking, no death and with slow breathing. Damn, homie, you the man, homie. They can't do it, but you can, homie. They can't do it. We got a few people to highlight today out here cooking in these mm, streets. Yes, we do. First and foremost, the one and only Landon Tice. Yep. Out here winning the dailies mm-hmm. every single goddamn day. <laughs> not the live ones. Not the live ones. He's not. He's he not fucking around. He does not around play, around does beat live players. But man, if <laughs> but you online want, players. Yeah, if you want to talk about running daily <laughs> events online, who does it better? Than Man, this guy. This guy. Who does what is it, the fifth month? dub of the of the month? I don't fucking know. There's a lot of. He lost count. Can't even he keep count. lost count. Bro's cooking so hard he mm-hmm. can't even. He can't I mean, even keep I have count. his player scope open. Okay. Mm-hmm. Talk to me, kid. Player scope. What is a player scope? What is this? This, oh. is, uh, this is action. <laughs> this is action dealer here. Action dealer. Look at this. A lot of scores. Pretty impressive, sir. Pretty pretty nice. What's that ROI? Biggest cash, 85K? When did you cash for 85K? Oh, it's second th- in the bracelet. This is like lifetime. Yeah, this is lifetime. Oh, I see, I see. Second in the, in the 1K bracelet okay. against uh, James Gilbert. Yeah. All right, Last Becker, I good. hope you're fucking watching, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're paying attention. Get a little shook. That's right. My man's out here in the streets. He doesn't mm-hmm. just win $400 birds for 40K. No. He's out here winning fifty-five dollar events for fucking three K. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> does it all. Okay, my guy cooks. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> He's out here with that with that high heat oil, like olive oil and shit. You mm-hmm. said you said you wanted Becker like yesterday. Yeah, well, what do you think he's doing? He's Stop. trying to drive the price down. <laughs> he's, he's trying to unload here, okay? <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to catch a wick. <laughs> green talking. candle, green candle. Uh, uh-huh. Also cooking in these tournament streets, the one and only Jason Kuhn. My guy just may have had the best entry to a final table that I have ever witnessed. From oh, the God. US, 1.3 million. Please welcome you? Jason. No. <laughs> 
Jeez. It's my stunt double. Was that what I think it was? Dude, that could have been so bad. A no. backflip by Jason slips, like, Kuhn. No shot. He's done it a hundred times. This yeah. FT on its head you wouldn't put himself in that spot to miss it. Imagine, yeah, he just breaks his... That's my stunt God double. Forbid, breaks something and can't, can't beat the final table. Right. The Moorhead Eagles just started off with a three. It's 3-0. Three Let's fucking go Moorhead. <laughs> I'm pretty Let's sure... Let's go. I'm sh I'm pretty, it's on. <laughs> yeah, he would have to be, like, hospitalized before he, like, missed. He'd, he'd be sitting there in a sling with, like, a broken collarbone still playing. Uh, that, people. You know, that actually happened at a WPT final table. I think it was Boosted J. Yes, his was ACL. celebrating, and he tore his ACL. Yeah. Like, heads up or three-handed. And no just, way. you know, gritted through and fucking... Well, I mean, you honestly... As someone who's torn their ACL, there's nothing you can do immediately. I played a full game of softball after I tore my ACL. It, it, I always find it, well, it's, crazy. it's not funny because, you know, people are getting hurt. They but like, three. When they get hurt, like, celebrate. Remember Grammatica? Oh, the was kicker. It, the kicker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah remember yeah, yeah. remember he, yeah. like, he used to do these crazy celebrations <laughs> yes. when he'd, like, make, like, a 25-yard like a field goal. Yeah. And he just, like, jumped in the air and just, like, tore his ACL or he tore some ligament. was, like, out for the year. Yeah. There's been so much of those yeah. things, like, just getting hurt while celebrating for no reason. Yeah. You get excited. I, I get over. it. You it's get like excited. NFL, and then, NCAA. I mean, here's the thing. If you're going to yeah. get hurt while wow. celebrating, you're probably going to get hurt anyway. Wapo. I want to know right like, on it. how what many is times do people get hurt and not even realize it because they're like, like, oh, 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 no. Oh, 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 no. That happened to uh, oh no! That happened to someone in the Super Bowl. They were coming onto the field. They made another one. Uh, the yeah. <laughs> Moorhead lighted up from downtown. It's down nine down. zero, three this for Super three Bowl, for three. Yeah. Uh, Fred Moore, one of the defensive linemen. No, I Greenlaw, think? Greenlaw. It was yeah. Not, yeah. He was Greenlaw. sprinting on the field. He was hype, and he was sprinting on the field and just blew out his Achilles. It's crazy. The Achilles injuries this year, wild. So <laughs> I was playing soccer once, and I broke my toe. Like legit, broke my toe. That's nothing. Can't do anything Sh for it. Sure, whatever. So fucking. He's a trooper, man. I Cut it off. I, I played for another two hours or so. Yeah. Kind of hurt. Whatever. Sure. Didn't even really bother me, though. It wasn't. Sure. Whatever. I had no idea. Maybe like three hours later, I couldn't fucking move. I was in absolute tears. Oh. And it was just like, I realized it was the adrenaline that I was just oh, from yeah, playing. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder how many times that happens in like professional sports. Did you ever hear the Ronnie Lott story? Nah. <laughs> he, he fractured his pinky uh, in such a way that it was like, uh, it, it basically like couldn't be fixed in the moment. It couldn't be reset. Uh, so I don't know if it was a compound fracture or if it was like dislocate, whatever. It was just like a bad, bad fracture. And this is in the eighties, mm -hmm. uh, was going to require surgery. Couldn't reset it. It was in the Super Bowl, and they go, uh, you, you can't go back in. And he goes, what do you mean? I can't go back in. He goes, you broke your pinky. You cannot go back in. He goes, what if you cut it off? And they go, well, I suppose if we cut it off, you can go back in. He goes, cut it off. What? Motherfucker cut his pinky off at the knuckle. Really? You never heard this story? No. Bro, it's incredible. Pull, no. pull, pull, pull up a picture <laughs> of Ronnie Lott. can't be real. 100%. No way. No fucking way. Absolutely accurate. He cut his finger they off. They told him to... that he could not go back in the I game don't... the way he was, and he goes, cut it off. But I don't understand. Like, why? why how is cutting it off make it better? Because they couldn't set it. Okay. And, uh, I, I think it was like it needed attention, so he probably was why being ushered to. Why couldn't they just wrap it up? They needed to set it. You, you couldn't, like, leave it unset. It'll, you know, swell and heal, and, like, you won't be able to set it later. So he was just going to, like, oh, you don't wow. have to play a full video, but if you could just find a picture of Ronnie Lott, like, holding his Super Bowl ring, you'll see that he has no finger. That's amazing. <laughs> um, how, have I, how have I never heard about this? This is insane. He had his, his finger amputated. That's the long recovery that's time what, after used, reconstructive that's surgery. That's football used to be, a, a real man. <laughs> yeah. Men used to go right? to war. <laughs> fucking cut your finger off to keep playing. Men used now. to go to war. Oh, by the way, now they're instituting a new hybrid kickoff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so people don't get hit any longer. Right. They're going to bring flags onto the field. Uh, it's going to be five on five. And uh, they're only going to let Tyreek Hill return kicks oh, yeah. <laughs> a whole season long for they, every they won't, single team yeah they want for every team yeah. right quite honestly it's, it's kind of it's kind of weird how uh how much like advantage the defense i mean the offenses are getting like when it comes to everything in every sport basketball football well every sport is going to advertise themselves as more offensive minded even yeah. ho even hockey is like the scoring has gone significantly up over the last few years <laughs> i mean hockey they needed it like hockey was kind of boring. Well, for with basketball and football, like they don't care. Nobody wants to watch a seven nothing game. Same thing with baseball. Nobody, I mean, I want to watch a one nothing pitcher's duel, but like I'm a purist. Yeah, so and do I. Most other people just like don't. They want to see bombs. Right. So they're like, you know, yeah, strike out a bunch and use the launch angle.
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Break some fucking records. So Ronnie Lott's cooking. So Ronnie Lott, cooking. Ronnie Lott cooked. Ronnie Lott's been he's, fucking He's forever crept. cooking. He is forever cooking. <laughs> that, that, move. That, that is such a gangster thing to pull up at parties. Like, somebody starts telling, like, a glory day story. Yeah, and yeah. then you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I played a little ball back in my day. <laughs> yeah, guess, how, guess what they do nowadays? Fucking Kevin Ware breaks his leg, gets off Bro, the court. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I've still not watched that injury. Dude, it's, it's, it's so, so gruesome. It, it's that burned into my March brain. Madness, March Madness, yeah. Yeah. It's so gruesome. I, I, I can see his... Yeah. I, still, I, see the I still remember it vividly. We were at Mesa Verde. We were watching March Madness in the side room. And it happened to happen when I had turned away. And the whole room reacted. And I was like, I'm never looking back at that television. <laughs> Until like this game is fucking minutes. over. Awesome. It was insane how many times they played the replay. I, I, I can't believe Guapo hasn't pulled it up yet. <laughs> I will, a, I'll take no, my no, screen no, off. No, I don't no, care. No, no please it, don't, don't shoot yeah, it. Let's move on. Don't, guys, speaking of, is, speaking of fingers falling off, um, did you guys hear whose that Seiko's finger at a poker game like fell off from like infection or some shit? What? <laughs> Are you just making shit up? No, I, like I actually heard about this. Source, like, I made it up. He, he wasn't getting it treated or something, and like Can we get his he was playing on poker. The podcast? And I guess it just, <laughs> my finger fell. Off. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Got to talk to Josie. My okay. finger fell off, and someone took a video of it. Okay, where's what? the video? I'm sorry. What? How did you guys not hear about this? This was. I played got, softball with, with all him. these fingers. He took a. He had to get surgery after shooting himself in the hand. It was very loose with no bone to connect it. It was also smelling really bad. Oh my yeah. god! He <laughs> just had a gangrenous fucking finger. Well, this and is it back fell in... off when he was playing poker. I put my <laughs> finger in the freezer. Anybody want finger appetizers? <laughs> or is it finger snacks? I played softball with him. He's a fucking monster. Legend. Just an... Oh wait, it, it said he shot himself? Yeah, it says that. It's the he shot himself in the hand October 28th. Yeah. This was, yeah, this is 10 years ago. He was cleaning his gun in the kitchen, then he fired it. How? Th this is another thing that boggles my mind. I grew up around guns. My dad was a fanatic, and I've done a lot of disassembling, cleaning, shooting, all these things. How does somebody fucking sloppily clean a gun that's chambered? I don't know. Like, there are protocols you go through, right. so this exact yeah. thing never fucking happens. Maybe look down the... This yeah. is the same guy that let a ball bounce off yeah, his head. Yeah, that's fair. That, no, you're, <laughs> you're right. He also broke the biggest scandal in... Uh, in sport. Man, imagine if podcasts were a thing back then. Uh -huh. what happened? Jose Canseco would be 10 times He's richer He's the one than that kind of blew the whistle on all the steroids <laughs> that was going on. In, yeah. in, Barry uh, Bonds, <laughs> Alex... <laughs> imagine how really? dumb we uh, were, yeah. man. Yeah, he's the one that... Yeah, because he was obviously doing it, and he was just like, listen, I did it, we all did it, here's, here's imagine all the people that did how it. This was like an interview we or something? This was an, this was an interview and... I mean, it was a multiple... Did he get things, caught, yeah. which is why no. it started? He no. Just, he, just, uh, he, started. he wasn't even in baseball anymore. He yeah. wrote a book. He just wrote a book. Yeah, okay. That's right, he wrote a book. He wrote a book. Imagine how dumb we were. We looked at fucking... Jose Canseco in McGuire. 1999. Yeah. I mean, from, we, we looked at him from 1987 all the way to 1999. We were just like, oh yeah, that's normal. Oh my God, this yeah. guy's Jack. That's, that's an athlete. <clears throat> Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire. See, Mark Mc Barry take, Bonds. <laughs> takes Andro. Yeah. You know, of course, that's what athletes mm -hmm. look like. You know, right. we're regular people. We don't look like that. Right. They look like bodybuilders. Sammy look Sosa looks real awkward now. Look I'll tell you at, that much. Oh, he, he lost the pigmentation in his skin yeah uh, uh. i think it's uh, i don't think it was on purpose oh well, i don't know i've it's heard like, i've heard diff conflating stories you look at andrew stories, mccutcheon rather. from rookie year sure he was a little oh skinnier to now he looks normal <laughs> this guy looks, this guy's like a like a monster yeah like uh, with the tv screen bro <clears throat> they him and mcguire looked like the cartoon characters from rbi baseball on the <laughs> nintendo right. right there was like three body types on rbi baseball <laughs> look at him there, there was the jose canseco <laughs> body type then there was like the Ricky Henderson body yeah. type, and then there was like the David Wells body yep. type, and that was it. And the Jose Canseco body type was just like he had a waist this big and then yeah. shoulders this broad. <laughs> yeah. Now there's only two people that look like that: Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. Even no, Judge, ju no, Judge no. is thin. Ju Judge is thin, and 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 Stanton uh, trim trimmed way down. He lost a lot of weight. This year. Yeah, he trimmed way uh, down, and um, it's working because they played. This Came against the Pirates yesterday and he had three home runs. On the same pitcher, he including a grand slam. He needs it because uh, last year was he looked real, real nice. Bad and he just had yeah, they were talking about not resigning him. No, nah, he looks real um, nice. The yeah, Yankees too much, Probably. too much money. Well, the Yankees lineup is so now, right? ridiculous. Yeah, like imagine like you're a pitcher and then now you have to face like Rizzo. Like you have like Rizzo and then you have like uh, 
uh, Juan Soto, and then after getting you get Juan to, Soto and, right, and, and then, him only fitting and into the have, two and spot. And then after him, you Glaber have to Torres. face. Then you have to face Judge, and then after him you have to face Stanton. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, then you have Volpe, who's right. batting ninth, who hits like thirty bombs a year. Yeah, yeah, when you acquire Soto and you look at the lineup, you're like, well. Two holes like the best yeah. we can do, man. <laughs> like I, I, I don't know what to tell you. We kind of have an all-star roster here. Yeah, it's. Sick. I wonder where actually Soto does end up because Gleyber Torres is a good two. It feels like. No, I'm pretty sure Soto's two. Judges three. Soto's like a natural three hitter, but like, yeah, you're you're gonna move him to like two if he's fast enough. One, but I I, I think he's probably too far along in his career yeah, to hit yeah. him lead off. Uh, I mean, guys like that make a good good seven hole hitter, but like you just waste. At bats that way, so like, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna lose like ten or fifteen percent of his at bats if you put him in the seven hole. Maybe not in that lineup. Not talking baseball, huh? Well, talk, <laughs> talking baseball is way different than talking pirates baseball. That's true. Uh, all right, last man who's cooking. I think we owe this guy a huge round of applause because, quite frankly, this was so. This was more impressive than the Jason Kuhn backflip. The last chef standing. I don't know what that means, uh, but this was the best sideline interview I think I've ever seen in my entire life, and we absolutely owe it to Airball for his new career path. Congratulations, buddy! Like you, you are, you're it. Brown Baller, who is currently stuck sixty-three thousand dollars in today's twenty-five fifty game. Oh, one hundred and twenty thousand! Wow, live update from the stage. He's currently stuck one hundred twenty thousand in today's twenty-five fifty game. He just lost another pot in his heads-up and stand-up. How are you feeling, Ishan? And do you think you will survive this heads-up round? I got cucked, bro. Fresh off your cuckage. Now, I'd like to know what are your thoughts on the punt of the day when Mariano seven bet jammed ace king straight into Jow's pocket rocket resulting in a 163k debacle of a hand I, mean, you know I can't really judge because I just shoved 60,000 into trips on, in a 10k pot Things are just heating up here on the Hustler Casino Live stage. Does he always sound like I'm that? Nick Airball yes. Hustler Casino Live. Charlie, back to you <laughs> I'm Nick Airball from the Hustler Casino floor joined by He wants to be monogamous. Oh, yeah. He goes, yeah. after fucking three girls a day for the last 20 years, I got to tell you, I think I'm a one-woman man. <laughs> <laughs> this shit's tired. There's a difference between wanting and doing. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah, Kirsten has been cooking. She, she made back-to-back -back final tables uh, in the circuit, I believe. I think it was the circuit, yeah. She got second and fourth, or fourth and second. Fourth yeah, so in the main. On the Sunday. World, yeah. Fourth on Sunday and then second on, on Monday. Uh, and then she had another final table previously. She had a couple seconds in the rings recently yeah. also. She's been absolute cooking. Also, Go big Jamie. shout out to, to Lily uh, Newhouse. She got third or fourth? Third. She's cooking. Third. Third She's been cooking 2K. a lot lately, too. Yep. Everybody's fucking cooking, man. Cook, cook, cook. Everyone's cooking. What'd you do last night? I ran kings and aces. I heard you got cooked. <laughs> oh, no. I got cooked. <laughs> Honestly. Gotta get, gotta get Nick Airball in there to do some reporting from Bobby's room. Wow. I, I both lost the maximum. I was thinking about it. Uh, How many bets went in pre? Five, and I truly probably could have folded, but only because of a read. Was that all of it, or did it? <sighs> we were 120K deep. We put in 27,000 pre. Yeah. Uh, I had a read. But he did not stack me. Um, I lost the maximum in two spots where most other people probably would just check fold flop because they play too fucking tight, but I don't. So I did the right thing and check raised. Sick brag. Yep. And got punished for it. Yep. <laughs> um, just pay. And then... Uh, I lost the minimum with the Kings versus Aces for sure. I think anybody else gets stacked there in some capacity. But he didn't want my money. He did not want my money, and I appreciate him for it. So I only lost 40K. That's not too terrible after being up 80. No big deal. E. Uh, I'm not cooking. Uh, other people not cooking. <laughs> Since we're, we're going down that path, <laughs> uh, there are plenty, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> 
We've, we've already <laughs> discussed that Otani is not cooking. Uh, our man Durr Boy. is not cooking again. Now, obviously, this is just speculation. Uh, take it for what it's worth. The source is Doug Polk. Uh, so, you know, I think that comes with some level of credibility. But on the recent Lodge stream, and by the way, uh, this is something that I have to tell you too often will happen. People forget that these mics are eavesdropping and that the table talk doesn't just go unheard, you know? Right. So uh, you have to be kind of careful what you say. Although I, I imagine Doug's going to be putting out a video, so he probably doesn't give a shit that it went out publicly, but they were discussing Tom Dwan and his most recent debts, owing a couple hundred thousand. I think Terrace was basically saying like, that's not a lot of money to him. Why doesn't he clean up these debts? To which Doug replied. I'm just, I have I'm just inquiring, you know? Pretty good knowledge that he owes about thirty million dollars. Thirty million? That's what you heard. Thirty Jesus million. Race. Oh my God. And so when he, these people pop up and they owe him, he owes them a couple hundred k. Yeah, but like pay off the couple hundred k. Well, but maybe the people with the bigger balances are people that you really would want to make sure they get paid. Hmm. Interesting. You're saying prioritize the small guys. Well, the big guys. Came first. I mean, there's a strategy of paying off your debts. Start with the smallest one. That's a strategy. <laughs> <laughs> the silence is loud. What if they're more dangerous? More dangerous. Well, but then you'll have fewer things to worry about. You know, like okay, all right, cool. I paid off all the small hun couple hundred k. Yeah, small right, now let's work on the thirty million dollar one. The small <laughs> <one>. <laughs> you know what I'm I mean, you know, if he pays what, like, a hundred bucks a week, <laughs> should be able to get that down by, I don't know, the end of time. So, so <laughs> I, I gotta tell later. you, Terrace, not not real good at reading between the lines here. Uh, Doug was obviously being very, very careful with his words. He was right. quite aware that he was mic'd up. Uh, right. You could see the hesitation before he said, like, I have it on good authority, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But I know things. <laughs> he basically kept saying, like, you know, he owes, he, he owes upwards of 30 million. And Terrace is like, well, then, yeah, pay off the fucking chump change so these guys don't call you out publicly. And he's like, what if the other people <laughs> well, are scary? <laughs> scary, <laughs> dangerous people. <laughs> and Terrace is just like, uh, I don't really see the issue there. Give a couple hundred thousand to these guys, make them go away, and then, you know, start paying back the 30 million. Like, as if it's just sitting somewhere in a safe. Right. Or, you know, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. I, I've been meaning to get that to you. Oh, 30 well, million. My bad, you know. I know. a lot. Oh, all right, we're good. Maybe. Our uh, mics weren't on for a while. How long is a while? I don't know, but there's a lot of no sounds in the chat. Mm. Oh. It was off. No for audio. Like Still no audio. 15 seconds. We have it now. Oh, you mean back? like after the. It All right, we're back. Another segment. It's, it's fine. Okay. okay. Well, that was long, long ago. Conrad, I thought we so I thought we banned you from looking at the chat. What do yeah. you mean? I just, literally says no audio 20 seconds Guapo's ago. Guapo's on it. You right. know, you, right. are you questioning the man? He's yes. cooking, okay? Indeed. Every day, Guapo is cooking. Yes. <laughs> My guy hasn't slept in three weeks. I mean, Today it begins, though. I get to sleep. Yeah. Triton's over. Triton's Guapo over. finally gets to sweep, sweep again. Sweep. Sweepy. Like, <laughs> if, if like Dur our little baby here on if the... If Dirt wins the main event the next three years, mm -hmm. no problem. Okay, that's, that's true. That's true. No problem. <laughs> no <Yeah>. problem. <laughs> no problem. Um, have some I, don't know if they wanna, I don't know if, there's, you know, if the people he owes want to wait three years, but... Here, here's the thing. Like, Seems like a solution. I don't me. know how true. I don't know how true this debt is. Uh, obviously, we're memeing it quite a bit, and maybe that's a little bit unfair because there's no reason for it to be public. Uh, yeah. Like none of his collectors are are calling him out outside of uh, specifically Peter. The which people have not spoken. Which seems to be a very small amount by comparison. Now <laughs> he's one of the less scary about, people. Yeah, we're talking about ninety six thousand. Yeah. Whenever it might be upwards of thirty million. Right. For 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 Durr's sake, I hope. Doug's wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that was the other thing I was going to get at. It's like people often mistake uh, or or misrepresent what debt actually is. There's yeah. a million ways that there could be in debt. He could be 30 million in makeup. That's certainly not the same Bruno as Mars is in debt. 
Bruno, he is rivaling. <laughs> I don't know that he quite has the singing chops as Bruno to Bruno get Mars a ninety million dollar. Bruno Mars featuring Tom Dwan. <laughs> yeah, at the Aria. Cuts him in mm-hmm. on the ninety million dollar yeah, deal. Yeah, get in like, there. Well, let's get you. Out. Start but singing, Dirk. Point is, like, <laughs> Dirk could just be. Dirk could be in makeup. Dirk could be partially in debt. I mean, there's a million ways where uh, he could be like holding money for someone that uh, he potentially. I'm. I'm. Some really, of this debt could have already been written off and. Yeah, correct. Not even he might have bought debt for someone else, and like now he's on the hook. He might have vouched. There's a there's so many ways where right. he may be in a bad spot. He may not be in a bad spot. But the point that I'm trying to arrive at is, uh, first of all, we don't have any public details. I assume Doug wouldn't have said that if he didn't plan on releasing some sort of public statement. But I don't know. I don't want to make assumptions. Um, even still, uh, I have a suspicion that. One way or another, Durr's in a position to, at a bare minimum, work that sort of debt off, right? Like, these numbers feel all very gaudy to us, Mm -hmm. but it's all relative. There are plenty of guys who, throughout the years, were talented poker players and accrued millions in debt, maybe two million, maybe three million, something along those lines. And they just remained in action. And everybody was like, well, how? It's like, because they're fucking good. What, what, are we, what was that? Those are the guys looking for dirt. <laughs> well, quite a stretch. Uh, these are samurais. <laughs> Aren't they Japanese? Stop, man. I'm working here. Good Lord. <laughs> Work hard. You're no longer cooking. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, someone DM me to... <laughs> these are samurais. <laughs> how do you know he doesn't own like, like, um, $30 million for a bunch of you know, samurais? I'm just saying... That's a little racist. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Oh, <laughs> shit. The <laughs> guapito, racito. <laughs> You're not helping. <laughs> We're not trying to. Yeah. Figured. Thought not helping here. Um, Does anybody have tortillas? Can you, can you pull up Bit B's? Uh, not Bit B. Wait, is it BB? Hold on a second. Is that the crazy guy that hunted down that, that, in, and then lost his mind? That's who I'm trying to say, yes. Bit, Bit Boy. Bit, Bit Boy. Boy. Yeah, Sorry. Bit B is Patrick Stable. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I realized immediately <laughs> the mistake that I had made. Wrong guy. I, I realized immediately. Uh, so it's at BitBoy underscore crypto. Uh, somebody DM'd me today and said that he had a, a thread somewhere also calling out Duan. Let me see if I can find it for you. I'm on it. Um... But yeah, I, I mean, I, I look, I, I wouldn't take BitBoy's uh, word for meaning anything. He's not exactly the most reputable source in any sort of arena, but mm-hmm. um, I, it, it looks like this isn't his personal page. This is some sort of like news page, I guess. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, and I can't use the search feature on desktop the way that I could on whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's probably something I should have just looked at before I... I went to uh, air. I was too busy <laughs> making pancakes, though. Um, you were cooking. I was cooking. I, I <laughs> physically and literally was cooking. So, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I don't think that this debt getting aired is anything more than gossip. I mean, like, that's kind of the way that it was framed, too. Of like, well, I heard. I have it on good authority. That he's 30 million. I mean, like, look, outside of just, hey, maybe don't do business with somebody who might not pay you back. Uh, I, I don't really think that this impacts Dur's image or anyone else. And also it might explain why he's taking a job, you know? Might explain that uh, ACR ambassadorship. He's goodwill, you know? I'll sign a million dollar deal, start sending you 100K a month, maybe over the next uh, 10, 20 years. If I don't end up in a ditch, we'll pay you off. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Yeah. In the in the world of high stakes gambling, though, like this type of stuff is not that uncommon. Um, so many, so many, so many different ways to both acquire debt and uh, like be owed yourself. I mean, I can't tell you how many spots when you're when you're gambling for high stakes, you get put into where you are playing a game that you're not being free rolled per se. But when you lose, you will be expected to pay immediately because you have a huge edge in the spot. And like, basically, that's the gift of giving you the seat is the, the expectation that when you lose, you pay immediately. And when you win, you wait a very long period of time to be paid off. And like, th- this is another way that it easily could have happened. Like, he might be in a situation where he can't transfer debt. He might be owed like 100 million from games that he's just crushed. And then he took out 
uh, debt against that, right? Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden, like, you can't zero it out. There, there's just, like, so many fundamental ways where Tom could have kind of done nothing wrong and landed with a big figure over his head. So I, I don't really think that this is the the big scary monster that it's kind of being presented to be. I, I just think this is the nature of underground high stakes gambling. Yeah, I think that's good to clarify it that way. Yeah. Just so people have perspective on what possibly could be going on. Yeah, I think I think the the notion is uh to paint him as like a deadbeat Welch. And right. quite frankly, if it does come to to air that he's thirty million in debt, now I think even more so it's uh it's not about the money with Peter. Right? Like it seems like even more so him now finding 90k to to fix things with peter mm -hmm. it seems more stubbornness than anything else at this point um or maybe i guess like he feels betrayed by an old friend whatever i don't know um but that's the latest update on uh dirt watch 2024 uh dirt watch dun dun stay tuned for more to see who gets cooked in this <laughs> in this debt collection agency yeah uh weird world we're living in man uh the thing is too like it's it has a lot to do with twitter a lot to do with social media like this stuff all happened 15 years ago too to this magnitude if not greater i'm sure there are a lot of big names that you would be shocked to find out like what their their tally is throughout the years but nobody was talking about it. like it just it spread word of mouth amongst people that would be doing business with these individuals right like it wasn't a, a big public warning so much as it was hey, you know, like maybe if you have so-and-so in the game, make sure they post. Mm -hmm. Like that's a big thing. When you're running private games, especially if you don't want there to be a security threat by having a lot of cash on hand, you'll often do it with a debt sheet uh, or a ledger of some sort. There are certain guys that like you want in the game, but not at the risk of giving them credit, you know? So like they just have to post. Yeah. And uh, if if they don't, then... <laughs> You know, it, it becomes a, a really dicey situation. There are a lot of people who've gambled on uh, not making those types of individuals post and running into it, you know? Yeah. Then somebody has to vouch for it or, or eat it. Go ahead. I was just thinking about the cooking, not cooking. And mm. is Kevin Martin on the not cooking list? He is. Oh, he is, actually. Poor Kev. That was where I was going next. Mm. Good call. Uh, he actually got cooked. I got you. He got cooked. Uh, Kev Martin... You know, he pitched this idea to me. We were at a retreat together in Utah for, with Elliot, and he was like, bro, let's, let's start from zero and go on the road and just fucking stream it. And I said, no. Kev? <laughs> I go, that sounds like great content, man. Uh, but I've worked too goddamn hard <laughs> to go back to my roots of having nothing. <laughs> like, do I think I can make it as a broke individual? Probably. Do you I want to try? <laughs> you don't want to pretend to be broke again. Right. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's a big sacrifice for a lot of reasons. Like, forget the inconvenience of everyday life because, look, we're, human beings are resilient. The body's resilient. You can, you can deal with a little less sleep. You can deal with a little less comfort. You can deal... Like, he didn't go hungry. He didn't go without shelter. You know, he was still pretty set up, all things considered. Uh, so forget about the inconveniences. That's just a short-term thing that you sacrifice in order to make good content. It's not just that. It's... You're inconveniencing yourself and you're also cutting your hourly by like one what? one thousandth just on, on the hopes that you're making content good enough that you can recoup some of it, right? Like it'll get watched enough or it'll open enough doors down the line that it makes it worthwhile can because... You, can you explain exactly what he was doing? Yeah. So he set out to... <laughs> it's like the most extreme version of a bankroll challenge. He had absolutely nothing. He had a few material goods, uh, like headphones and a few other things. Uh, and he got set up in a, pl I think he was in Canada. I'm pretty sure he was in Canada. He got set up in like a studio apartment with um, a full 365, 360, sorry, 360 degree camera shots. And like Big Brother style, live streamed his life 24 seven. Wow. Um, and you know, he's, he's done this before. He was on Big Brother a couple of times, Big Brother mm -hmm. Canada. He won it once. So this is like right up his alley. But the thing was, he had to, he had to acquire a bankroll somehow. So he would go out and like, I think his first challenge was he sold maybe his headphones for like 60 bucks or something like that. 
uh, and then deposited on GG. Uh, he was going out and like doing odd jobs. Like I think he worked as a barista for a few hours and, you know, filming it all along the way and vlogging it. It's a really cool concept. Uh, it, it's a really cool idea. I think the, the biggest reason why it misses the mark is because he already has an audience and he already clearly has made it. So it, it becomes a little bit, I don't know if tone deaf is the right word, but it's a fake struggle, right? It's a self-imposed mm -hmm. struggle and it's not the same as the audience that he's trying to reach that's actually going through this rinse and repeat struggle. He's really just appropriating my life. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just talk right. to Conrad. He should have just set Conrad up with cameras. <laughs> right? Like, that's fucking absurd. He just cut out the middleman. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I should get one of these fucking sites to sponsor the real life. Exactly. The real life part of it. Exactly. Like, literally, we can <laughs> just sell life. the cons. I mean, look, Kev, Kev tried. There was only two ways it was going to end. He was going to make $5,000 or he was going to quit. And he quit after 500 hours. There's no quitting here. Take it well, there is no quitting for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you mean? What you do you mean? $5,000. There's, no, there's no quitting. Yeah, no, but you would have won. That, that doesn't matter. Who? There's no quitting. You it's won the life. 500 freeze out for 8K. It doesn't matter. It's a life challenge. It's greater than 5K. Bro, the, that's not. He doesn't get the way. What he gets to return to what? 8K yeah. doesn't even put a dent in the tab. Sure. It doesn't even start, like. Bro doesn't start paying rent until it's, he makes like 15. What are you talking? There's no end. Like, he doesn't get to opt out. He there doesn't get no to say, opting. Yeah, he doesn't get to say like, "Oh, I hit my goal." What's your goal? Thirty million? <laughs> are you saying Give the, the are you saying the show goes on? Yeah, the, the show, show goes, goes on. on. It's the fucking dirt challenge. You can't man. quit the fucking show. <laughs> you can't quit. You it are might, the show. You're the Truman Show. Like, it might just be like a six month project. Six months? No, no. Well, you can't. I mean, you can't just do it everlasting, like forever. No, the hopes are that you die or you fucking make some money. Yeah, of course, but like, like just for honestly, honestly, the content part. I don't, I don't, part, I, don't part. I don't, I don't know. I think you could. You're a fucking cockroach, man. You like live <laughs> month to month on negative dollars. It's incredible. Can't like, kill. Uh, honestly, sh you could show that that could be an, a long-standing fucking reality show for years. It was the Troopers vlog for like six years. It's rough life. What's rough he up life. To? I don't know. Drinking Starbucks, I guess. That's the only thing I know of him. About it. And just gets his coffee. He's got his girlfriend. <laughs> you know, just hanging, banging. Uh, <laughs> no, but le le legit, like, we're having a lot of fun with this. Uh, and it would be miserable. Like, imagine adding that layer of stress on top of. Like, but, but. He wanted you to do this with him? Yeah. I, I mean. <laughs> you would never. <laughs> no. I, I would do it in a different way. I would I, probably strive it. Yeah, that. you do it in a different way by not doing it at all. <laughs> no, I, I would just never do it. Like, I don't like the framing. I don't like the framework through which he built right. it. Right. Where yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, I'm going to go back to zero. Yeah. Like, there's no, you can't put toothpaste back in the bottle. Like, right. you are where you are. You know what you know. You're not actually broke. There isn't the same level of pressure. Right. But I would do something that's out of if our comfort fail, zone. You just go back to your normal. Right. Life. Exactly. There's there's really no risk. People I would do something. I would do something like this or something adjacent to this that's out of our comfort zone. Like if it was like, uh, you know, let's be homeless for a week or a month. Like, and honestly, like even that feels insensitive. Mm -hmm. if well, you're we, but maybe like something like a Survivor yeah, Man challenge. I was literally about to yeah. say, remember we used to talk about this, like when we first moved here, like we would watch Survivor Man, right? And we were like, we were like, let's, let's do like Survivor Man, uh, the Las Vegas Strip. Right. And you get like 20 bucks and see how long you can like last where you can't leave the strip and you just get twenty dollars. You got to make it work. Like, do you do you like you know go get like a five dollar meal somewhere, and then that's like a quarter of it? Do you try to gamble right. it up? What do you do with it, right? So, yeah, but like yeah. I also would, I also would just like, yeah, if it was just like okay, hey, uh, you have to go um, like camp for thirty days. Mm -hmm. Like we'll provide you with certain certain baseline necessities we'll give you like a multi-tool yeah we'll give you like a multi-tool we'll give you a tent for shelter so what's army knife? uh we'll give you a fire starter michael scott tried this and he lasted about an hour <laughs> right he cut his pants to right. make a bandana <laughs> <laughs> yeah like we'll give you a fire starter we'll give you like uh some sure. baseline food that if you ration it can last the entire time but also like it will it'll incentivize you to go forage for your own right i would do something like that because it's it has nothing to do with your stature in life. It has nothing to do with like your, your actual skill sets that you've monetized. And it has nothing really to do with um, you know, regressing off of what you've accomplished. 
right? And I, I feel like that's where this Kev Martin thing kind of missed the mark a little bit, where you're like superimposing yourself. It's like whenever those uh, CEOs uh, like uh -oh. dress in disguise and go be factory line workers. What's that show called? I, I don't know. I undercover don't know. boss. Yeah, yes. undercover boss. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, uh, I get the point of the show. It's always trying to like, you know, teach a big modeled lesson to the, the boss and like humble him and have him have empathy and all that stuff. And you I'm, were so nice to me. Hey, I'm going to give you a raise. Maybe it works, right? You, you're fired. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> but the point is at the end of the day, he gets to go home to his nice, comfy eight figure mansion and they're still going to be working the assembly line when it's all mm -hmm. said and done. So like, yeah, you might get a better perspective, but like you're still very far removed from one another. When you get humbled by the elements, like by by the aspects of just surviving because you don't have a choice, that's way, way, way fucking different. It doesn't matter how rich you are if you're in the woods with nothing but a tent and a multi-tool. Right. Yeah. You know, there's just no escape here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I find that to be fascinating because you get a lot more of the, the true human experience. Mm -hmm. For Kev, it's like you're getting the human experience, but you're also getting like um, a, a, a bit of a a play almost right because it's all things that he's already excelled at it's reality tv which he's very good at it's poker which he's very good at it's uh improv and uh being outgoing and finding ways to to you know get help or jobs or whatever to earn in the interim right and it's like he's he's just very good at all those things so there isn't really we're not really watching that much level of discomfort we're just watching somebody go insane because <laughs> he has to play one one hundred of the stakes that he's used to playing, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, now flips really matter because there's no rebuy. It's like, motherfucker, just put a camera in our living room and watch Conrad satellite <laughs> his way into the 250. <laughs> I'll give you this content seven days a week, you know, but I, I do think that there is, I, I do think that there is a constant uh, sentiment in the community that they want to see they, the problem is, is that you want to see how people who have made it did it. You want to see that process, but you can't reverse engineer it. Once they've made it, once they're known and you care enough about them that you want to know what their process was, they can't go back and demonstrate it for you. And I think that's why Brad Owen's so popular. Brad, mm -hmm. Rampage, it's all the same. Spe specifically those two. You really got to watch them grow up on camera. Yeah. Right? Like they just went from absolute zero to... You know, playing the biggest stakes in the world, especially for Rampage. You know, yeah. he's playing the same games I am all the time, um, and just firing off seven figures. It's like three years ago, this kid was playing penny stakes. Right. Yeah. Four years ago, five years ago, whatever. You know, so yeah, I, I think it was a really well intended idea. Uh, I even think like the execution aspect of it, of it being like twenty four seven cameras, and you know, kind of having that Big Brother style of uh, always being able to check in on them, kind of mm -hmm. thing. I think that was really cool. My best guess is that the analytics didn't align. Like, probably just wasn't super popular. Yeah. Um, it was not a banger. It's tough because, you know, we know this from doing the pod. When you do a bunch of long form content, the long form is just a proxy for creating more short form content. So if you're not just churning out dozens and dozens and dozens of reels and hoping that, you know, 5% of them fucking hit. Uh, then you're just kind of creating the content from nothing, you know, because the actual viewership on many, many, many hours of kind of the same thing. I wonder how much crossover from his uh, Big Brother audience that he got, because I know there's people mm. that like, you know, when Big Brother is, is going on, there's you got these live feeds that are 24 seven. Right. There are people that grind them. They watch them like <laughs> Michelle follows a bunch of people on Twitter where you can just like, instead of watching them, you can just, you know, uh, just have to follow someone on Twitter and they'll tell you kind of what's going on. But like, there's people that literally watch them all day long, yeah. nonstop. So yeah, but yeah. I don't know if he had to cross over from his I would fans. Bet initially he there, did. Cause I'm sure he has a bunch of big brother fans and, yeah. you know, winning the game. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, but I like, maybe that just tapers off throughout, t you know? Yeah. I, that's what I mean. Like when it was a new project, I yeah. imagine like the interest level out mm -hmm. of the gate was probably very right. high. And it's just like one person. It's not like they're just living in a house right. and there's a bunch of like, and there's not much controversy. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, the biggest controversy is like, is he or is he not going to get the barista job yeah, for the yeah, day? Yeah. Yeah. You know, is, is he going to, is he going to final this table, this five, yeah. $5 MTT right. where first is like four fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty interesting. It, it, I, I think, I think an element of it that could have made it, um, more appealing to the general audience would have been if he had a big bet in place. Mm. So if mm -hmm. he was like risking 50K to win 50K, something like that. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, maybe you don't 
quit at 500 hours and you just have to enjoy there is there is some comfort in watching people's pain mm-hmm. you know there's a lot of appeal to to seeing people struggle and go through things uh presuming that it's not like detrimental to their mental health or anything like that yeah. like we like to watch people physically struggle we like to watch from fit to fat to fit again and mm-hmm. you know kind of like go through the, the the actual process that a lot of people can relate to and stuff like that but yeah we don't want to watch them actually go insane right no, that wouldn't be fun. Well, there goes my idea. <laughs> You're a little different. You're already insane. So I think you already set the baseline. Do we just call this? Honestly, like, like I actually think that you could do this really well. I think I could do it too, too. Like I've been thinking about it for years. I'm just, I don't know what it is. Like I have, there's some type of fucking block I have just like starting it. If I just start something. Well, it's pretty unnerving to have people just watching you 24 seven. I mean, I wouldn't do the 24 seven probably. Yeah, the the trouble with not doing the 24, even with doing the 24 seven, the biggest trouble with any sort of content like this is that you need a lot of, like you need an editing team. I mean, without 24 yeah. seven, it just turns into a vlog, really. You still need an editing team. Mm-hmm. Don't give me this bullshit that you're the editor. I am a chief, chief master okay. editor. Yeah, chief master editor. Chief <laughs> muck editor. Uh, speaking of chief master editing, uh, don't forget master chief. that we are headed to the WPT cruise next week. I'm super pumped for this. I uh, just got confirmed that I'm going to be playing the big game there, which is really exciting news. Now you're back in. You're uh, back in on the cruise. I'm back in. Uh, how big is the big game? At least 300, 500, maybe Ooh. 351. Um, I think I'm going to I think I'm gonna have like a million in play. Let's All right. go. I think I'm going to be really ripping it. Um, right. I got upgraded to a suite. So we're, we're happy. Wow. Living <laughs> life, guys, huh? You guys have fun, baby. Oh, oh, that's funny. I wasn't going to say life. anything, but Fuck I think it. they screwed up on my um, on my reservation thing because I have a suite as well. No way. Yeah. <laughs> what? I mean, he's not, he's not telling the truth. <laughs> No, I'm lying. I'm joking. Yeah. He's a terrible fucking yeah. liar, man. I want to play cards against you so bad, you buff. I don't even I don't... understand that lie, though. What was the point of that? Because that's, that's the way he just lies. Just out there. He, he, he picks the most innocuous lie ever that would like never be believable. Like his cousin is playing for the Mexican. Hey, that, fucking... one, that, that one, one got was, through. That one was perfect. That one got it was through. so good, and it was because Hunt was implying something. It kind got of. through to Hunt. Like Conrad and I were texting each other on the side <laughs> oh, immediately, okay. within yeah, seconds. Me and Berkey were texting, dying, laughing because that we knew what was going on. It was so good. Yeah, Guapo is like a five year old where it's like he knows lying's bad, so he doesn't want to do anything. Like, <laughs> he doesn't want to do anything hurtful, yeah, you know? Right. <laughs> it's just like, I also got a sweep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, How about that? Yeah. How about um, them apples? But yeah, if you guys are interested in joining, there are still rooms available. Hit hashtag voyage in the chat. It will give you all the information that you need. Uh, I am pretty pumped from this. The reason I brought it up is because we're going to be podcasting from the boat. Yes. We have a really cool setup there. Uh, still trying to figure it out. I don't think we're going to be able to make it work with the ocean scene in the background unless we film early in the day. Mm-hmm. It's so dope, though. Like, full panoramic yeah. uh, window shot yeah. of the entire ocean, uh, which w- actually when we're at sea probably wouldn't be quite as picturesque. Because it would just be blue on blue. <laughs> you know, like you wouldn't be able to tell where the sky ends and the ocean begins. Yeah, maybe. But like when they're docked, they, they send us pictures now while they're docked. Mm-hmm. And it's like you see the whole shoreline in yeah, the background, which nice. is really cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have a nice setup there. Uh, we're not going to be able to do it live because the Wi-Fi is not going to be good enough. But we're going to film probably every morning and try to get it uploaded by our normal time. Uh, fingers crossed that we're going to be able to pull that off. I'm not sure what the upload speeds are going to look like, but that's the initial goal. If not, then we'll be trying to upload for the afternoon. Um, But one way or another, we're going to be bringing podcasts to you from the ship. Uh, Really hopeful to get uh, a a handful of interviews. Got a loose confirmation from JRB. Uh, I think that one would be really fun. Kick around some some war stories. That would be great. I feel like that would be like one of our best guests ever. For sure. If, If he opens up. Like he is up. he is a remarkable storyteller. Yeah. Just remarkable. Like I think that there is something very um uh what what's the word I'm looking for? Like very endearing about somebody who is both humble, uh maybe humble is not the right word. Uh somebody who has been humbled, yeah. let's say, okay. uh from his situation in life or or from the game itself or whatever but then also on the other aspect of it is like just very uh 
not not necessarily to the level of pretentious, but like very self confident, very uh, like full of himself. In kind the same of way. arrogant in a way. Yeah, and and what you end up with in the middle is just like this incredible ability to just like tell a very colorful story, and you know he's been gambling high stakes for the better part of two decades. Mm -hmm. So literally, he's seen it all. Every character that you could imagine. I was lucky to kind of get a little bit of a preview of that during my time in, in Bobby's room, but, or, or not Bobby's room, uh, Ivy's room. But man, it's just like, you, <laughs> this is why I think I'm downplaying the Durr thing because like, you just can't fucking believe some <laughs> of the things that happen. Yeah. I can imagine to wealthy people who gamble a lot. Yeah. It's, it's truly, truly remarkable. Like we're talking like kidnappings, uh, when they when they're traveling overseas, mm -hmm. like one of the members just gets kidnapped and held for ransom. Not like not like you know, someone young, just like somebody wealthy just gets picked up at a train station <laughs> and fucking uh, kidnapped. That, that happened to one of like a, a a catcher for some MLB team. So his family member got like kidnapped in like Colombia or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I mean, ransom. I'm sure it happens a lot in like. People who come from impoverished companies or companies, countries. Uh, yeah. You come from the Dominican. You come from the, these places where like baseball is your way out. It might have been yeah. Cervelli. It was Cervelli. Yeah, it was Cervelli. Yeah. Oh, really? For, yeah, I was gonna say. I'm Whatever happened sure. to him? Hmm? He, was, happened to him? He, he went to the Yankees. Uh, he, no, he <laughs> he came from the Yankees. Oh, that's we right. We got him yeah, from that's the right, Yankees. That's right. That's right. And then um, uh, he ended up. I th well, he retired, and then he was coaching Padres, maybe. Mm. Yeah. Okay, but yeah, uh, yeah, ridiculous things. There was another story where they played. Uh, they played hold him for seven hours uh, uh, at, with after, one card after a flight to Europe. Everybody was super tired. No, not one card. They were playing with a short deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were playing with a short deck for seven hours and nobody fucking noticed. <laughs> you know how incredible that is? <laughs> there had to be like, someone in the game that fucking noticed. God damn it. I can never find the deuce when I need it. <laughs> and there just has to is be there somebody. a brick in this fucking deck? Yeah, it's like, man, I'm just getting down a lot of good hands. Yeah, somebody in that game was like, this is a short deck, and I don't think Every everybody Every fucking knows. time, ace on the turn. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot what? of big boards here. Jeez. <laughs> like, we play with a fucking P-knuckle deck? <laughs> Actually. <laughs> kind of. Not that far off. So, yeah, I think he would be a really great guest to get uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully, we can get some others that uh, showed up. I know Brad and Andrew. Uh, actually, Brad's not going because he's having a kid. Mm. Uh, congratulations to him. I think mm -hmm. that's... He had his kid. Did he? Congrats, oh, I thought Brad. he told me she was due at the end of the month. No, he had his kid. Okay, congrats, Brad. Little baby... Uh, baby Brad. Baby Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Boy or girl, that seems fitting. Uh, all right, let's get to an In the Muck Boy. to wrap today's episode. All right, we got another user submission here. This comes from uh, two three Rumble, and um, just waiting for the go on the screen. There it is. Okay, so um, uh, when I when I plug this in, I forgot to change the uh, blinds. So they're actually playing five ten. Um, so you're seeing two five, but they're actually playing five ten, and uh, Rumble raises to thirty with two black aces. He's met immediately by a uh three bet to 85 how are we always in the muck with aces we're all i just because that's that's a mucky hand when you don't win it just put up the just uh, pay uh yeah. <laughs> logo let's fucking move on right so uh the small blind decides to f to flat hood flat <laughs> oh yes the hood flat <laughs> hood flatting the uh we love the, hood yeah, the three bet or smooth call right? so yeah so he uh he, he flats a three bet and uh back to us and we decide to four bet to 280 the three better okay it's a little small uh folds and now the, <laughs> the, hood the hood flat comes in again in the small flat, blind. Not to double hood flat. That's a double hood flat. Okay, he has right? jacks every time. Let's right. go. So, so the flop comes uh, nine of clubs, seven of clubs, three of hearts. Okay. Uh, small blind checks. Five we SPR. go ahead and uh, bet about a third of the pot, 225 into 650. Okay. Met with a call. Turn. Deuce of clubs, putting three clubs on the board. We can't be in the muck with uh, this hand. A check. <laughs> we, and then we go ahead and we bet about half, a little over half pot, 600 into 1,100. Okay. And uh, we're met with another call. Sure. And the river is the four of diamonds. And now the small blind decides to just lead <laughs> okay. jam all in for pot. Okay. 
which nice. is about uh, 2400 Okay, nice double up. Uh, right. Enjoy so your we free chips. Go ahead and just say call. Sure. And we're shown pocket fours with the four clubs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Are we in the muck? <laughs> what is happening here? We're searching for a bridge. Uh, I mean, I mean, mean, to be fair, Pocket Four has played one street really well. Yep, the last one. Yes, the last yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, nice let me answer. let me just pull this up real quick. And so he said, um, "What you got, Brian?" Right. Yeah. He said, "I want to die." <laughs> he, he said, "Oh my." <laughs> right, he said, "My thought." Uh, he said, "My thought was uh, the preflop action with the preflop action. He definitely had a pocket pair, but assuming." I would have heard earlier in the hand if that was the case. Obviously, a flush could have been there, but why open? Why open jam? Uh, five ace five of hearts. No, uh, no. He said I maybe mean, with the back door on the flop, not. and then he said uh, I'm pretty sure it was it was a fold, but very odd absolutely line not. in my opinion. Absolutely not in the muck. Okay, the, your thought process is in the muck. A little context is villain had. Has flatted out of position multiple times with strong hands like ace jack suited, queen jack suited, jack jack, etc. Okay, these are not but good hands. This, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you're cold calling three yeah. bets, these are okay. not good hands. But this is the first time playing with him with no history. I uh, said was hoping uh, was hoping he was overall overvaluing uh, okay. an overpair. Sure, sure. Uh, if he jams an overpair there, he's not for value. He <laughs> thinks he's bluffing. Um, so if he jams jacks, it, he thinks he's bluffing you and right. honestly it's probably not that bad because the framework of that thought process is incredibly mucky um it's it's very misaligned with how somebody who has a call call range from that position naturally builds their range like, like it just doesn't matter how wide they're calling twice with if the root of it is pocket pairs, it's difficult to be wider than the amount of pairs that you'll have. So the point is, is that he'll be so concentrated the pairs. If he's calling, I mean, he had fours, so let's assume he's calling deuces too. If he's calling deuces through queens, right? And say kings and aces just find it all in somewhere along the line. So he has deuces through queens. Uh, that is 66 combinations of pocket pairs. Uh, it's impossible to find any amount of suited hands that he can be calling there that are relevant in this particular situation, right? So if he has 66 combinations of pocket pairs, at most, if he's like way too fucking loose and somehow he does have the ace five that you're implying in these other hands, at most, he's going to have like six or seven flushes, right? Yeah. So like one-tenth of his range, at most, is going to be flushes. And that's like really really being generous that means that he has like all 10 nine suited all jack 10 suited all queen jack suited. like some of these hands somewhere along the line probably should have hit the muck but what we know never hits the muck are the pairs the instinct to cold call a three bet is almost always going to be pair driven mm -hmm. right it's very rarely Wanna flop that set yeah it's very rarely queen high out of position right flop the hot card right like you want to have clean outs. You want to know when you hit it, you got it. Some hands have like some <laughs> some attraction. <laughs> some hands have some attraction to them, like Jack Ten suited. Yeah. You know it's not strong enough to four bet, or at least you believe it's not strong enough to four bet, but it feels too strong to fold. I get that. King Queen. Everybody has the the understanding. Like I'm dominated too often. You Same know? with the ace X's, right? You don't want to make an ace and then be like, oh, some, to do. somewhat. I mean, at least you're drawing to the nuts. So like, I could see a hand like ace queen or ace jack getting in there. Those types of hands. I could see maybe even ace king not wanting to four bet getting in there sometimes. Brian said ace X's, by the way. I know. Ace X's. <laughs> ace X's. All your ace X's. <laughs> that was Sam's. Yeah, yeah. Grind my gears. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but the point is that the core, the absolute core backbone of this range is constructed through pocket pairs. And so, yes, he's going to have some sets. Not many, though, uh, especially when the turn is a club, right? Because you assume any pair that calls on the flop has to have clubs in order to call. So now half of his pairs are folding to the C-bet. And sevens and nines probably check raise a lot. Right. And, yeah, and the, the flop sets probably exit on the flop, especially, like, bottom set. Uh, so what threes. was it? Threes. So, yeah, if he has threes, sevens, like, those are probably exiting the majority of the time on the flop. So what you're left with are queens, jacks, tens, eights, 
sixes and then you know fours and twos <laughs> i guess when they have a club kind of thing yeah, yeah. point is the the whole point that i'm trying to arrive at is our decision is not on the river our decision is on the flop and it's just how do i maximize against this core group of hands that he holds i don't care about going broke to a set <laughs> because it doesn't matter him set mining cost him money even when he stacks me there are not enough implied odds here for him to put $300 in preflop in order to stack me the times that he makes sets because I'll set over set him at some frequency mm -hmm. and I'll two out him once all the money goes in at some frequency or I'll backdoor flush him at some frequency. Or he right? just won't make a set. Right. And <laughs> yes. And then there's the other 85% <laughs> of the time that he just doesn't flop a set. Right. Mm -hmm. So or we, he flops an open ender and loses more exactly. money. Exactly. So we make all of this money with all the times that he doesn't hit his one and eight shot. Right. And that's the only thing we can be focused on. We, we have aces on a nine high board. We do not give a shit in a four bet pot. <laughs> we do not give a shit about doing anything other than finding the path to having all of the money in by the river with aces. I don't give a hoot or a damn. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So like the simplest sure. path here is just to, to geo three flop or three. So like pick the size that will allow you to choose the same percentage of the pot over three streets and be all in by the river. If you miss that and you just range bet flop, okay, fine. But I don't think we're range betting on this particular board. Like not like that anyway. We're so concentrated to over pairs ourselves that we're mostly just going to want to like try to get the money in as fast as possible. So I think 3E is probably as small as we go, but I could be wrong. Uh, we'll find out in the sim. If we do have a hand that goes smaller than 3E, it will be aces, right? Because it doesn't need any protection, especially mm -hmm. aces with a club. Would you go um, small and then go 2E on the turn? So that's the thing. If you choose any size other than the 3E on the flop, then turn is only 2E, in my yeah, opinion. Right. right? Even when the flush card falls, we have the ace of clubs. We just mm -hmm. don't care. Right. We are not against the flush right. very often. And we don't want to set up a pot-sized river shove. That's that's where this hand gets mucky, is that the reason why you feel like you can fold river is because he's jamming for pot. Mm -hmm. That's like, oh, well, this sucks to call because pot's expensive, yeah. and he has to have a really good fucking hand or a bluff to jam for pot. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, I mean, maybe not not as much now, but like that used to be a thing, right? It's like, I'm going to set up a pot-sized shove right. on the river. And it's just like, that's why... We've moved away from that, and we go to these these geo sizes, these and two easy threes. So you're you're getting the same percentage. The thing each, is, the thing is, street. half pot is pretty nice when the flush start does complete on the turn. Mm -hmm. When you start to go bigger, there you do start to put a lot of fear into red jacks, right? Mm -hmm. Like that hand just starts folding pure. Uh, black jacks might like mix, you know, that type of stuff. But it's predicated off of going too small on the flop now, right? Because now, whenever you go like third half full. You just don't get called enough on the river. Yeah. Right? And now you're losing a lot of value for your aces. So you've lost value mm -hmm. over all three streets. Yeah, and also like if you're if you choose a three E, that doesn't mean you just always follow through. Like the, right. the run out obviously is in, in yeah, indicative it could of one line by the right. end. Yeah, exactly. And like now you're just gonna find right. a check somewhere. Right. Um but yeah, I guess the last point I'll make before we cut to, to Landon and the wizard is that uh mm -hmm. you, you really have to lose the fear of the traditional good five card hands that can be there, the more bets that went in pre, mm -hmm. right? The more bets that go in pre, the more pruned this range is going to be and the more concentrated it is to a certain hand class. If you have like red aces in this spot and face jam, then you can maybe consider folding. Sure, right? sure. But ace of clubs too good. Because like, yeah, he'll have bets. nut flushes, right? But like he doesn't have ace five here. That's not a thing. No. Mm -hmm. Like... It he has black fours. That's way more of a thing. Ace five is like, oh, he could have a hand that somehow beats me, but never really does this in the first place. Exactly. And now I'm finding reasons why I want to fold, right. not reasons why it's is good. Like, yeah, yeah, somehow ace five, no club had to call a half pot bet on the turn. Like, that's not a thing. We're talking about red jacks pure River folding. me hot, baby. Four diamonds. Four diamonds. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, we're talking about red jacks. They should just pure fold probably versus half. And you have two aces coming at door. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyways. So, so yeah, let's so let's see uh, what the wizard has. Uh, to say. The wizard didn't really know what to do with this one. <laughs> right. So I gave this guy a range of just like all of the pairs in full, and I think then this like is fine. maybe Landon some said, suited he's paint. Like, how am I, I give him all how the queens? How am I supposed to do this? I'm like, just paint it, man. I, I would give him all the jacks and queens. I gave him some because some of my four bets sometimes. I don't think he would, but um, maybe people who cold call fours just like tend to think I, about Adam Walton. He would four bet queens. I don't think he would. I think he would. I've played with him. You haven't. I have played with him. Okay, well, I've played cash with him. And I'm telling you, he... Let me, let me, let me just tell you this. He might cold call and then lead. Exactly. He might do that. 
Exactly. He might be in there a little. He's done this with aces. Uh, I've seen him back raise 10 7 suited. Like, yeah. people like this just try to be, yeah, like, really can... hoodish. And they try to, like, stay outside of the cap of what their range is perceived to be. I'm going to give them. I would give them a lot. 50%. <laughs> not kings. I mean, whatever. You can give them some, but, like. Why not? You said. I just, is... think, I just think he has a greater concentration to jacks and queens than you're giving him credit for. This is. Like, you had half and zero. I, I think, like, yeah, I think it's a lot closer to that. All right. Outside of that, we don't have much debate. You can give him some kings. I don't care. But... I don't care either. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, the more yeah. kings we give him, the more of a yeah, snap call range bet half pot for the theory size, but I can change that now. No, you don't have to. I'm more interested in what the actual strategy is. Is it just three? Uh, no, I don't think. Uh, it's close, actually. I think so. I mean, it's 49%. I'm assuming that's three. Probably close. Uh, so the small buyer when they have fours of the club, he's supposed to call, actually. Sure. <laughs> You have clubs here. You have clubs. But like, I like that laugh. <laughs> uh, turn is the, the duck of clubs. Now we duck. know he doesn't have deuces. We go, we go half pot again. You bet with ace of the club. You, you just keep going. You just keep going. Or as you got a club, you can call some touch. Sure. All right. Dun, 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 dun. And no lead jams. It's funny because I was looking at the other spot like without the queens and the jacks or whatever. And then if you took the sizes that uh, in position took in this hand, he does get the lead jam like 18% and fours gets to mix it. And mm. then aces is indifferent on the end. But yeah, even if he checks, like we're all in. It's not close. It's not close. So yeah, it just keeps choosing three. And right? then if you jam, it says, oh, selected line is rarely used. In oh, you can't see it. It says selected line is rarely used in GTO. Your output doesn't like, it, what can you do? You right. <laughs> broke. It's broken. It's broken. It, yep. So like in, in you it in my nose. Like it's funny because the way the hand was played by bro was fine. Like yeah. you put the money. Besides in. Besides, the structure's not great. It's but yeah. How how bad can it be? It's like B thirty versus fifty versus B fifty. Right? The, the issue is that you land on river with full pot. I think. Sure, but like. I think I, I think we might two size now. Well, for what it's worth, this in the picture, the picture. Brian told me they played a 6K pot to picture it's 7K, so it's going to make right. it a little bit different for right, sizes. Because yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. in this spot, like, 3 is half well, pot. He said, he said they were 3,500 effective, but then he said it was a 6K pot, and he bet 2K on the river. Um, so, so that's I'm not mark. exactly sure. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a difference between sh him shoving for 2,400 and shoving for 2K. Okay. Well, 1,900 or whatever, yeah. yeah. So... Anyways, it's like when you get in this spot and he jams, you just like pay and lose because if he checked, you would have jammed anyways and you would have lost. Like you're not finding reason to justify checking back here somehow. Mm -hmm. Checking back here would be suicide, right? Because like you you jam and you just get called by queens, you get called by jacks, you get called by tens always. So you can't just be like, oh man, he could have a set and it's all over for me. Like that's that's his problem, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. So end of the day, like you played your hand fine, but having some sort of like convoluted reasoning as to why you lost this hand. It's funny because when he, when Guapo put on the screen and he saw the donk leader on the river, Guapo goes, oh, this guy's dead. And I'm like, <laughs> like, you're kind of right, but right. you don't really care. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. It's just exactly. not worth enough to that, care. That's the thing. It's just like, sometimes you just, you feel like they, uh, they're never bluffing in this spot. Right. You're just like, they just jammed into you. It's like, well, I'm like, they just don't have a one pair hand and they're not bluffing. Yeah, but so this, like, this line is like that sort of spaz too, right? Like here's, here's what yeah. you know for sure. I'm he, saying what you think is happening, but that's probably not actually what's really happening, even in practice. Well, when it feels like my it point is. is, is like the deductive reasoning is just off because you start right, to run exactly. through all that's these hands that beat you and they don't exist. So right. it's like what you know for sure is that he has mm -hmm. a pocket pair. Yeah. So it just comes down to does he have fours with a club? <laughs> Or is he spaz jamming jacks, hoping that you fold red aces? Which, which, even, which you probably will. Like I would fold red aces. Even yeah. fucking fours, man. Like you have to think in practice. Like someone has to like peel twice and just be like, oh, like here it comes, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. but like it's not that unreasonable. It does peel twice. In I theory, mean, at some it frequency. Doesn't, in theory, this is all nonsense, right? The range is like crazy. Yeah. Like, how do you really like make sense of it all? You well, know, you make sense of yeah. it. Like. Turns it's it's input output, man. Right. Like, if that's what his range is, or then has, that's how it plays. Or he has like fives with a club, and he's just like, I block the straight like exactly. somehow or something like that, and just rips it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I block ace five suited. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I could <laughs> have, I could have right. ace five of clubs. I'm right. all in. Right. Maybe they they thinking they they forget about what happened pre 
pre-flop. Exactly. Like, I, I could have all these hands. I so think the I, other big problem with my, or my other big problem with this line work is that when you choose sizings outside of 3E and you go small, medium, large, mm -hmm. you don't have bluffs for the large. Mm -hmm. And so now it gets especially challenged to get paid. You're supposed to have like ace king ace king yeah but like ace queen people just don't really take the small medium large line with ace king in a club they either overreact and bet too large on the turn or they just check back and realize their equity poker's funny you have ace ten of spades sometimes you're like fuck it you know what? I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bluff sometimes okay you don't want to use hearts because backdoor suit's bad but like right yeah you know it is what it is. What it is. It is, it is, it is what are you gonna do? What, what are you gonna do? I, 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 yeah, I think the big takeaway here is just <laughs> charge him appropriately through three streets so that you don't uh, have a real decision on the end. Mm -hmm. If you're facing half pot on the end, this is a no brainer. Yeah. Right? Like, you Snap. just fuck this guy. He sucked out on me for two outs and he paid a lot of money to do it. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, he sometimes randomly spazzes. And maybe if you, if you, um, you know, if you sized it the way you did, he might fold turn. Right. Which, I mean, that's not what you want. I mean, you don't want him to fold turn. You, no, of you, course. But, but, right. But I'm just saying that, like. You put him in a tougher spot. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and well, I mean, it really goes back to the flop. So maybe he doesn't end up folding. But the point is, is that you get to play a much more <coughs> high EV pot. Because here's the thing. Like, when, when the fourth flush falls, mm -hmm. when the fourth flush card falls, and it checks to you, and now you jam for full pot, which you're going to with the absolute nuts, He's probably going to fold fours with the club. But the irony is that he called twice with fours with the club to make a backup flush sometimes. Right, yeah. And then be able to bluff catch with said hand. Or just like beat the give up ace king that he thinks doesn't bluff too much. Right? Yeah. So like if there's yeah. a six, a clubs yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying it would pure call, but my point is like you you take the ability for it to pay. Yeah, it calls a good bit. Right, but it probably isn't going to call at all facing full pot. Oh, in, in, instead of in, half. You're saying there was a six, exactly. six clubs. Yeah. It probably just calls less, but sure. Yeah. Well, I'm saying practically. You sure. In practice, it probably just never calls, and I think that becomes a big problem because, the, again, he has pairs. So this is the region that we're targeting. He's going to have a weak flush when the four flush falls. Focus. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be able to have him priced in prior to that happening. And then just call queens no club sometimes because it's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck it. Yeah. Okay, poker's easy. Yeah. Um, if you guys would also like to submit your own version of In the Muck, be sure to head over to our Discord. You Please don't have a hashtag Discord <laughs> in the chat, or you can find it pinned. It's the pinned tweet on our Twitter page at SolferYTV uh, underscore TV. No, yeah. SolferYTV or underscore TV? SolferYTV, no underscore. No more uh, aces in the muck for a while. Yeah, the hands that definitely work the best are. Uh, I disagree. I think people up. who are presenting aces are actually in the muck. Yeah. Right. All the time. Yeah. Because aces are the key just pay hand. Mm. They're the they're, they're the keystone to paying. You want to keep running, you want to keep looking at aces hands? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I want to beat it in their head <laughs> that when you have hands this fucking strong, you need a really good excuse to fold. Like somebody showed them your hand. And if you have hands that are like going. Or like your dog and you roll it incorrectly. If, if you have hands that are going like multi ways post flop, those, mm. we're, we're probably not going to do those hands because. We're using the wizard, and yeah. the wizard is made for you know heads up spots. Maybe once so. a week we can pick a multi way hand yeah. and just yeah. not whiz it. Yeah, because uh, I do like the conversation that's I, I that do sparks too, right? off of this. Yeah, because I mean the thing is, is that when you're playing these stakes, right, you're you're just playing multi way a lot. So right. like we should examine that. Perhaps but perhaps there's the wizard chat. Does. Let's let's say every Wednesday we'll dedicate to multi way hands. There we go. Yeah, we'll do we'll, it. In we'll the do it as a part of strat chat. Okay. Okay. I like that. Okay, so for your multi way We're hands, we're evolving the in the yeah, that's segment. right. In the Mux Evolving, baby. Um, big shout out to GTO Wizard for sponsoring the In the Muck. If you guys would like your own version of Wizard AI, which I can't recommend enough. I, I honestly can't explain to you how much it's improved uh, my ability to study where I don't have to use a pencil and pen anymore. AI is sick. Uh, AI is sick. Hit hashtag wizard in the chat. Follow that link and uh, follow the affiliate link and get your own. That's going to do it for us today. Uh, God bless to everybody who's cooking and everyone who's in the muck. Enjoy your March Madness. We'll be back tomorrow at noon Pacific for our final show of the week. Be sure to check it out and be sure to head over to uh, WPTVoyage.com to get more information on the ship. Until then, we'll see you guys all tomorrow. Peace. Peace.